What does change the mortality is a real awareness of the body and of the breast. And our message to women is if you feel something different, suspicious, concerning, seek evaluation. Let's talk a little bit about the types of lumps that can show up in a breast. Let's start at the benign end of the spectrum. So how often will a woman either doing a correct self-exam, and by the way, I'm so far from this myself in my current uh, practice that I don't know if it's still in vogue or not in vogue to teach women how to do a self-exam of the breast, but maybe you could clarify that for me. But if a woman is doing a self-exam of the breast, uh, and then if she's also getting an exam from, say, someone like yourself who knows what they're doing, what's the probability that a woman in her lifetime is going to feel a lump, and then what fraction of those lumps turn out to be benign? Most women have uh, variations in the texture of the breast. And so almost all women have mm. uh, breast tissue or other things that one can feel and they can appreciate that vary. And in younger women, these may change with the monthly cycle. And in postmenopausal women, they may represent you know just residual breast tissue. If you lose weight, you might feel some of that um, architectural tissue more readily than other times. And so there's a lot of um, normal lumpiness, if you will, to the breast. And in our advice to patients, I think it's worth that they have an awareness of their body and a general sense of what feels sort of like normal to them and what feels different from normal to them. It's been pretty hard to show that a regular monthly breast self-exam or a rigid approach to self-palpation um, adds that much. There have been some studies in, in China where they literally had tens of thousands of patients who were taught how to do a breast exam versus not. It really didn't change the mortality from breast cancer. But what does change the mortality is a real awareness of the body and of the breast. And our message to women is if you feel something different, suspicious, concerning, seek evaluation. Because nowadays we can usually get people imaging studies, whether it's mammography or ultrasound, combined with an exam by a breast surgeon or a breast expert, and usually do a quick evaluation that most of the time, you know, reassures the patient that this is a benign finding in the breast itself. Some patients may need further evaluation, either with follow-up imaging or even with some kind of a needle biopsy. But the majority of these findings are not going to be breast cancer. Again, having said that, the most important thing is if a patient does appreciate a change in the breast or a lump in the breast, certainly if a physician or uh, other clinician provider feels something suspicious, it is very important to get uh, appropriate imaging and, if necessary, a tissue biopsy to, um, uh, to make sure we understand exactly what's going on. Now, if a woman ends up having a lump and the lump is suspicious enough that it requires you know, more than just reassurance that it's nothing, the next step is going to be what? So, so, so if a woman has a mammogram that shows a lump that is suspicious, with or without calcification, uh, what what is the what is the algorithm for evaluating that lump, and when does it go down the path of more imaging versus a needle biopsy uh, versus an excisional biopsy? Again, the the key takeaway is if people feel a lump, they should seek medical evaluation. Yep. For patients who have findings either on physical exam or on imaging, the imaging team, the quality of radiology uh, has become uh, really terrific at most places around the country. And they can often look at findings and say, yeah, you know, this looks like a benign change or yeah, this same thing was seen a year ago and five years ago when the patient had a mammogram and it hasn't evolved in any way. So it's reassuring. Or they can say, hmm, I'd like to get more imaging. So sometimes patients are referred for additional ultrasound or MRI imaging to be sure. And sometimes it's necessary to get a tissue biopsy to really understand what exactly is going on. And nowadays that usually begins with an image-guided uh, needle biopsy or core needle biopsy, where um, using an ultrasound or other imaging device, um, the radiology team knows exactly sort of where to pinpoint the lesion within the breast. They use a very um, fine gauge needle uh, to extract a tissue biopsy that's around the width of a pencil lead. With that, they can look under the microscope and usually make a clean diagnosis about what's going on within the breast itself. If we go to the point where we're actually getting a biopsy, what fraction of those turn out to be a benign lesion, such as a fibroadenoma? That's a great question, and I don't have an immediate answer. I, I will follow up with you uh, and try and get you the answer. But I would guess that the majority of these do. For most women, it, it turns out to be very reassuring that either it is a benign lesion, like a fibroadenoma, or a pre 
or even a pre-pre-cancerous change in the breast that might warrant additional follow-up or surveillance, uh, but is not truly breast cancer. Got it, which would be the analog of finding a polyp in the colon, which gets removed, which puts you on alert for more screening, but of course is not cancer itself. That's correct. And in fact, we may uh, get to the point of talking about ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS, which is a precancerous lesion where the cells are beginning to accumulate within the duct, but have not penetrated into the rest of the breast tissue. And in the analogy I give to patients all the time is this is like a colon polyp. It's a growth. It is a precancerous growth. We treat it so that it doesn't blossom into a full-blown cancer, but in and of itself, it is not a cancer lesion. 